So let's look at tech trends real quick. So the first one is just how much money is coming into the, the real estate industry to, strictly for tech. And by the way, if you look at the last four years, that's way over $8 billion. That's a lot of money coming into our industry, okay, to try to disrupt it at every place. And it's that's happening. What, I want to add, it's happening for, for two reasons. One you mentioned with the health of the economy. If you're a business, you're doing really well, right? And so mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of businesses in the venture capital markets investing a lot in a technology. Um, they've identified real estate as one of the industries prime for, for modernization, if you may. Um, and really, the, when they identified that is when Zillow had some success and when IPO acquired Trulia and became a $3 billion company now. They've grown since then. The technology, the VC markets looked up and said, oh, that's interesting. Maybe we can do the same in real estate. Yep, you're exactly right. Yep. That's a lot of money, right? So if you look at where the money has gone, um, last year, uh, search is kind of no real money in that, right? Because you already have the money in Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. Uh, if you look at brokerages, uh, that, that, if I understand it correctly, rep is represented by Compass. Yeah, and, majority of that's going to be Compass and then discounters, actually. Yeah. And then you look at the, per the purchase side, and that 260 all went to, I think, OfferPad that year. Yeah, yeah, right. they're an iBuyer. Yeah, yeah, they were the iBuyer for that money. This year already, um, Opendoor has, has raised, I think, at least that much, right? Yeah. They're in talks to raise that much. It's not official yet. Oh, got gotcha. you. Okay, so they're trying to do that. Mortgage, this is just online mortgage companies. Uh, ancillary services, kind of insignificant. Uh, Post-purchase would be property management, home maintenance, those types of things. Uh, agent tools would basically, mainly is in lead generation and um, CRMs, yeah. right? right? Managing your database and generating leads. Is. And, and the 408, the other is just in other. It's in the commercial, it's in other areas outside of residential sales. So if you look at search, this is interesting. So this would be Zillow. And um, this is the math is really weird on this, you guys. This is how, again, I get accused of being unfavorable to them. And I'm, I'm agnostic. I just look at the numbers and say, look, in the last quarter of 2017, Zillow claims they had 156 million on average, monthly average, unique visitors. Now, remember something. How many transactions did we do last year? 5.5 million. So in, in, in numbers of sides, that's 11, 11 million. So they, on average, every month sold 156 million leads in an industry that, that's every month, in an industry that's only selling a little over a million units a month in terms of both sides. Does that math seem odd to you? <laughs> Doesn't it seem odd? So we asked the guys break that down a little bit. You want to explain it? Yeah, yeah. We, we've always been curious about how this number has been so high. So we did a, a study to break it down. And, and according to our estimates, um, you know, 40% of that is really double counting. So if you go on Zillow via your mobile app, your desktop, and then do the same for Trulia, you're one individual, you will count as four using their methodology. And they'll sell it four times. And, and yeah, and they do that by design. Um, we estimate about 20% of all the Zillow Group websites are really um, focused on rental properties. And so we looked at, you know, there was 436,000, uh, monthly average of 436,000 homes sold during that quarter. So we're like, okay, within those 90 days, what percentage of Zillow's traffic is actually looking to buy? And our estimate was 2%. Two, two and so what that tells us is there's 40 Which would be 3.1 million right. leads. Right, yes, yes. So that, that tells us is that 40% of Zillow's traffic is really on there but not looking to buy. And we define that as, as voyeurs, as voyeur. right? Mm -hmm. And so underneath there, you actually see we identified some companies that are focusing within these, these cohorts or these um, categories. Facebook launched the rent, rental marketplace. Um, open door, kind of the eye buyer. They're actually looking at people online who are ready to sell. The competitive space. And then next door is launching real estate products across the country, focused on engaging um, the people that aren't ready to sell, but they're dis discussing about real estate. They're passionate about real estate. So the math is a little fuzzy because two percent is is three point one. Multiply that times twelve. That's thirty six million in an industry that only sells eleven. Yeah, yeah. That's they're serious within ninety days. So they're serious. Not all those are going to come here. When you first started in the industry, did anybody ever hand you a phone book and say, start calling, or is that just in the movies? 
Oh yeah, no, that, that, that's exactly right. If we had 11 million sides, if all of those represented a unique person, and it probably doesn't, we've got 325,000 people in the US. So that means that a white pages would have 3.4% 4, 3 of the white pages is a potential serious buyer. So the white pages is 79% more efficient you could you could actually make more money and spend less money if you simply went door by door and and just introduced yep. yourself and said I'm in the real estate business. But that's why I mean people It's hard to scale that. So real estate agents this is That's in, exactly in, in why. the defense uh, and and the value of this that Zillow will argue and rightfully so is that this is leverage that you can cover a lot more ground and it is it is it is leverageable, meaning that you can cover a lot more ground here than you can door to door. And that's the argument. Yep. Right. And if it didn't work, they would quit paying. So the thing that we know is the agents who pay the most amount of money, that that there's a positive return on that. So let let's be fair about this. It's not like every, it's not like people are losing money. A lot of people do. But on the flip side, they also make a lot of money from this. Okay. Uh, the next thing is is the the uh, uh, the development of AI uh, artificial intelligence chatbots. So essentially, what's going on right now is you have about ten or twelve uh, businesses that have gotten into this space of when you go to a real estate website, there's an artificial intelligence bot that says, "Hello, how can I help you?" and tries to engage you. And if it can engage you enough to get additional information, it then turns you over to a real estate agent to contact. Not a bad idea. So you see a lot of that going on. Yeah, Krishna and our research team looked at every single one of those companies, and they're 100% focused on lead gen and just generating a conversation with someone online to identify whether they're that 2% serious, and then passing them off to a human in a call center to convert them. Yes, and yes, that's basically it. So the big, the big challenge in our industry, you want to explain this, Jay? Well, it's kind of like, how do we communicate? Like a lot of people are talking about bolt-on. What does that mean, bolt-on technology and kind of the integration and the difference between the two? So if you look on like the slide, bolt-on, we've seen this forever. People have different technologies. They have their CRM. They have their IDX website. They might actually have a pretty cool like, you know, CRM that has APIs to MailChimp and other things. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the person who holds it all together is the agent. Mm -hmm. And we know this by they're, interviewing They're running them. multiple programs and piecing them together with spreadsheets. They're using spreadsheets. They're using Zapier. They're paying a lot of money and a lot of man hours to try to say, what are the insights that are happening here and keeping leaderboards and things like that. So it's very work intensive. And actually, the data lives in these companies. We have and it's hard to pull together. We have real estate agents that are spending how much money annually on technology? I can't tell you how many people I've heard say it's between, you know, easily, you know, for a mega agent, twenty to thirty thousand. But we've heard people say eighty to over a hundred thousand annually to run the technology on a big team. Yeah. That's, it's a that's big across expense. ten to fifteen products on average. So yes. ten different logins and passwords you have to remember to do this whole bolt on strategy. So when you when you hear your firm say that we're our goal is to be a technology company that delivers the real estate platform that our agents use and their clients prefer to use. It's also a, a, a math issue, right? Our tech fee is $25 a month, 300 a year. It is not 80,000. It is not 30,000. There's a, there's an economic reason why we have no choice, but to do this, the amount of money our people are spending and they're not happy with the results. No, nope. it drives them crazy. I mean, it, it literally drives them crazy. So we owe it to them to, to become this technology company, which, which we are becoming. You know, Think about it this way. Here's just a simple way to think about it. Do you think it's easier if you, for a real estate company to go build technology or a technology company to go build a real estate application? What's going to be easier? A technology company that goes and builds a specific application. So if we walk around and say we're a real estate company – but we actually do some tech over here. The problem is, is that means number one, we're not all in. Number two, it means the way we're going to approach it is this, this, this tech thing over here that we're doing in addition to the other things we do. When you realize that everything I've put up on the screen today is all what based? It's all technology based. It's all technology is 
is what's featured at the heart of the value of everything these people are doing. We have no choice but to go boldly into that space, become a technology company, which basically means we build it here. We didn't say we're the smartest. What we said is we're going to build it all here or we're going to partner with someone, but we own the code and we own the data, right? If you look at all of these, all, all, all that's going on out there, you probably have 99% of the real stages today that use technology and they don't own their data. In fact, we were told just, I guess it was yesterday in a lab that two of the most popular CRMs have just announced their new data ownership policy. And how was it? Well, if I'm correct don't me if I'm wrong, because Josh, don't they, don't they're, the companies. Right, they're, they're actually creating stricter policies that will kind of punish you for leaving. And they're thinking maybe that that, you know, I'm not going to give you the data, so don't leave. And it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that plays out. But it's not going to play out well. But if you take the bolt on, which frankly is the game we played for a very long time, Remember right? Um, and you look at where we're headed and where we think all great tech companies are, if you have a industry-specific cloud, which is what we've built for the last two years, you can have all of those pieces integrated again, mm -hmm. but now they're connected through the cloud. That's right. The agent doesn't have to do all of that work. Now mm -hmm. they can benefit from the insights, and it, it gets exponential. Like It allows us to innovate and add pieces very quickly. And they know we're not going to sell the data, and we're only going to use the data to their benefit. Right, and you've got a 30-year track record of how you've treated their actual dollars, mm -hmm. and I think that shows a lot of what, what our intentions will be for the data share. Of course. Absolutely. Gary, and, and to add to that last piece, um, we're actually seeing the market start to correct itself with the real estate tech market's actually been oversaturated. There's over thousands of vendors that actually, like Jay said, like own the data and make it hard to leave. Um, that's going to become no longer an option, though, because what happens is for them to grow or to survive, they have to build these APIs. They have to integrate with other existing systems. So that gets very sloppy. What happens is when you develop a platform, right, with, with like a platform like Keller Cloud, and, and you aim to build a, an application marketplace, it means that although the reason they're investing in building those APIs is so they can survive in the future and find a platform to hook onto because thereby the, all those purple dots will be on an island by themselves. They have to figure out how to integrate with another platform or with another core product that the agent likes and is going to use for their business for the long term. And so we're starting to see the market actually invest a lot in integrations and APIs because they understand that companies like ourselves, we're building the platform and that application marketplace. And yeah, and the problem with that is, is that, you know, MLS being a, a competition kind of environment where uh, I'll, I'll share my listing with you if you share it with me. That's good for the buyer and the seller, and it's good for it, it's good for the real estate industry. But when you look at technology like this, and if you're you're using bolt-on technology by another provider who also will sell that same technology to your competitor, and now they have their data and your data, how how can you create a unique experience, right? When we our biggest challenge is we would call up our tech providers and say we need to customize this so that we can create a competitive advantage. And they would say 90 days or longer. And then we'll sell it to everybody else. And then we'll sell it to everybody else. Now, I've taken a lot of pot shots again across the industry of who does he think he is saying that he's going to be a technology company. I thought it was really funny when one guy thought he was really getting us by saying, who's Josh team? He's never invented anything. And when Google calls and wants him to demonstrate what he's doing in AI, let us know. And we kind of chuckled, Neil and I, because Daniel, guess what? They already called. <laughs> Yeah, at the time that he written the article, what he didn't know was they'd already called. Yeah, what what our guys are doing in technology is, you know, it's it's pretty astounding actually. It's it's actually breathtaking. It's breathtaking. Um, right. So if you look at what we're doing, I'm not going to go through this, but if you look at what we're doing, essentially we created a, a roadmap to being a technology company, and that's what we're implementing. Okay. And the cool thing about what we're doing, which is all about the lab T-shirt, right? That all all that is for, or the lab socks, by the way, uh, <laughs> is to remind us that the agent is not only our partner, but from a software component standpoint, they're the boss. We are literally asking them, "What do you want? How do you want it done?" We're asking them to storyboard it, and then we're trying to build that product and hand it back to them and say, "Is this what you want?" And they're beginning to experience that, right? I think the statistic that, now guys, 
tell me if I'm if I don't get this right, but our referral our referral program uh, has been in existence how long now? February to March to April, two and a half months maybe. Okay, and it's already one of, if not the largest, referral network in terms of leads going through it in the world. Okay, well, yes, yes, absolutely. You're exactly right. Yeah, that's kind of astounding. That is literally astounding when you think about that, okay? And the reason why that product was able to be built in such a short period was because there, there was the plumbing that, was, that had been built and worked on steadily for a couple of years that made it possible to implement that very fast. So our ability to innovate around some, a singular thing is fast. Our challenge is, is we're greedy. And that is we literally want to annihilate the competition. So we're, we're violating our own rule, right? We're going to have to rewrite a new book called Everything. <laughs> I feel a little hypocritical when I walk in and I see that jacket. I say, you mock me, you know. Uh, how dare you mock me, right? I go to the bookstores now and I turn it over and I say, I don't want to see that. <laughs> no. 